Hi, I'm Katie Steckles. And I'm Peter Oller. And hi, Katie, what's today's mathematical object? Today's object is a fun object. It is a slinky. Aha, um, so we're, we're working our way through all of the objects in my cupboard, essentially. <laughs> um, and I have a, quite a selection of interesting and varied slinkies. Uh, and I thought I would just sort of round up a few of the bits of sort of mathsy things that you can talk about with this. So, I mean, it's a cool object, yep. right? It's a really, really fun toy. It's fun to play with. You can make fun noises with it. Like it's, <laughs> there's, it, there's lots of stuff. Um, but in fact... Uh, as as a person who's sort of in the world of maths outreach and adjacent to science outreach, the most common place I see them is when people are doing physics demos with them. Because mm. um, it turns out that they are a big, long, str- like a spring. They're a piece of uh, <laughs> metal or plastic that's formed into a particular shape. They have lots of properties that make them really useful for physics demos. Yeah. Um, so the obvious one that you see people do is to talk about waves, because this is a, a an object that propagates waves quite nicely Um, Mm. and you can either you know if you imagine two people holding the ends of a slinky at either end of a table with the whole thing stretched out in between them you can like sort of wiggle it left and right and get those sort of sideways waves and if i don't know if this is obvious not a physicist so i'm not (laughs) using the right words for any of these things the the lateral waves Uh. something uh (laughs) like side to side waves let's say um but you can also do the sort of compression waves Mm. I guess if one of them just pushes the end of the slinky sharply, it'll kind of create a visible narrowing of the rings of the slinky that then sort of passes along it like a wave. And that's a really nice way to sort of physically manifest um, things like sound waves, because that's essentially how sound waves work. So if you're trying to explain that to people, like that's a really nice sort of visual way to, to think about it, because the stuff that you're passing sound through doesn't actually move like when i yeah. say a word the air that i've vibrated in saying that word doesn't go anywhere it sort of stays where it or is if you, but it... if you sort of bang a table the table isn't wobbling yeah. quite in that the way that you think it yeah, yeah. um so it's, it's actually the thing that's moving is the compression wave so hmm. um it's quite nice for that and um you know the the fact that slinkies propagate waves really well means that they can do some fun things um so the obvious one that i always want to do whenever i see a slinky and whenever i turn up anywhere with a slinky in order to do a completely unrelated maths demo someone's like can we put it down the stairs um so <laughs> um this is a, a really nice thing that they do so you put the slinky on the top step you lift the top end of the slinky off and you sort of drop it onto the next step And because there's sort of an internal tension within the slinky, it pulls the rest of it after it. But in fact, when the bottom end of the slinky gets above the rest of the slinky, it's moving and it doesn't stop. Like it's just being flung across by the rest of the slinky. It's just sort of pulled Mm -hmm. over and dragged across the top. And it usually has enough energy to carry on, drop down the other side uh, and land on the next step, which then repeats the whole process. Um, and it's sort of like a, a compression wave in the slinky because you can watch it, right? The If you just happen to have handy a treadmill on an incline, um, as you often <laughs> do in, in these circumstances, you can put the treadmill on an incline and set the slinky going and you can sort of see this happening. And mm. um, there is sort of a compression wave that goes across it. And whenever it reaches the end, it sort of flicks the top end over because it gives it a bit of energy and then kind of creates the next step Um, and I guess as long as you calibrate the sort of diameter and height of your slinky carefully to the size of the steps yeah I'm I'm trying to think about where's the energy because you flicked it to start with but it's not your flick that keeps Hmm. it's it's also picking up energy from gravity yeah it's it's yeah it's it's gaining energy from the fact that it's losing height I guess it's Hmm. losing potential energy in the form of height and gain again not a physicist it goes down the stairs it's great and I feel like that's the canonical use of a slinky if you're selling someone a slinky that's presumably why you're selling it Um, because it goes downstairs it's it's genuinely so fun to watch and it's sort of hypnotic it's really wonderful Um, so the world record I mean obviously this is what people care about uh, the world record (laughs) for the most stairs dropped down by a slinky under its own steam with no intervention uh, is 30 Um, which is pretty impressive. Um, So it was it was a record set in 2014 by an engineer called Hugh Hunt, along with a science demonstrator person called Marty Jobson on the One Show, which is a British evening 
primetime TV show, and it was... They, they, I always think Blue Peter for Grown Ups. Yeah, it's, it's basically Blue Peter for Grown Ups, but they have... Yeah. Uh, Marty does these incredible science segments. They've got a few different science presenters that do different bits for it, and Marty's done loads mm-hmm. of things, um, including several world records. They also did uh, folding a piece of paper in half the most times, uh, and the piece right. of paper was two miles long. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> they folded it 12 <laughs> times. I'm full of facts today. Um, the, um, the slinky went down. They sort of set up a special staircase with the right height and depth of tread for the slinky they were using and it it was the previous record was 20 and they were shooting for 25 that was what guinness had given them as a minimum to count as being a new world record and they smashed right. it and got 30 so yeah uh, it's it's wonderful it was like so long ago now that there's no way to obtain the footage of it but it is um it it's just wonderful um <laughs> And, and just the joy, the joy of watching it happen. Yes. Uh, but one of the other things that they uh, talked about when they did that bit, uh, the demo, the demonstration that you can do with a slinky, and there's actually a really good, I think it's Veritasium's done a really good YouTube video on this, that if you hold, like if you imagine holding the top end of a slinky and letting the rest of it dangle down, and they're not like, they're not super stretchy, right? There's a finite amount of stretch in a slinky. So if you do that, the bottom end of the slinky will be somewhere in the air. Um, right. Like you might imagine that it would go all the way to the floor. It depends on the slinky and how tall you are. Um, but if you, if you hold it high up enough, uh, the bottom end of the slinky is just sort of hanging in the air. Um, and yeah. there's a fascinating thing that happens if you if you've got this situation and you let go of the top of the slinky, um, immediately the whole thing falls to the floor. But if you watch it back on a high speed camera, <laughs> uh, mm. so you're actually perceiving things that are happening a lot more quickly. Um, the, what happens is basically the bottom end of the slinky stays where it is. So it doesn't drop until the top end of the slinky reaches it. Yeah. And it's weird to see it because you watch this slow motion video of it and it's just like, what? what? You know, surely this is an <laughs> object that is falling. Um, and again, there's going to be some physics involved in this, I'm assuming. Uh, but it turns out that the the letting go at the top starts a wave propagating down the slinky. Mm. Um, and it, essentially, I mean, the, the wording that Hugh Hunt used was the bottom doesn't know that you've let go of the top until yeah. the wave gets there. I'm like, <laughs> mm, yeah, okay, I'll accept that. Um, but it, I think it's kind of, because obviously the bottom is supported in the air by the bit above it, mm. right? So there's, there's gravity acting on it and there's also a tension force pulling it upwards from the, sli- the slinky, the spring. Um, yep. And that is still acting on it when the bit above it is still where it used to be. And the bit above that is still where it used to be. And that continues all the way up the slinky until you get to the top bit. So as soon as you let go of the top bit, it releases the tension force on the bit underneath it, which then releases. Mm. So it happens in sequence. Yeah. Um, but the bottom bit doesn't know <laughs> So yeah. until the, the message actually gets all the way down there. So it's it's quite fast. And it's because... Because the whole thing is a spray. Like if you had a broom handle and you let go of the top of it, it the bottom would just start dropping. Yeah. But it's because the whole thing's sort of compressible in between. I yeah, I guess. And and mm. it it's sort of cool. Mm. But I I think this is just the, the one of those objects that sort of illustrates fringe facts about physics and about how the world works, <laughs> uh, which right. is one of the things I like about it. Um, yeah. The the main thing that I like about a slinky is that, as I've mentioned, I use it for maths demos. Um, And in fact, one of the topics that I quite often try and talk about is the idea of uh, topological shapes and identification spaces of a square. So if you imagine a square, one of the less complicated things that we've done on this podcast where we have to describe (laughs) an an object that the people we're talking to can't see. Just imagine a square um, done. And if you glue the edges of the square to each other, you will get a cylinder. And this is a very standard thing that people do in topology often. Uh, even though everyone introduces topology as you're not allowed to do any cutting or gluing, we're doing some gluing. So I get the square and I stick the edges together and I end up with a cylinder shape. And you can do that out of a piece of paper because uh, the shape, uh, a cylinder is a shape with zero curvature as is a piece of paper, so that all works. Uh, but mm. then because of curvature, if I then tried to wrap that paper cylinder round into a torus, which is the next topological fun thing to do by gluing the two open ends together you can't do that with a bit of paper Mm. Um, and it is exactly because a cylinder has zero curvature it's gaussian curvature and it's the whole thing where if you eat a piece of pizza you bend the edge of the crust slightly so that the end of the pizza doesn't droop down there's a whole um, there's a number file video it's all very interesting stuff we'll probably do an episode about it in the future i don't know but anyway you can't make a cylinder into a torus if it's made out of paper but you can 
if it's a slinky. And this is the reason why I use a slinky for this. So I get like, you know, make a paper cylinder because everyone in the room can join in and do that. And then I just sort of throw mine on the floor and pick out a slinky. OK, this is better. This is a better cylinder because um, not only does it let you grab the ends and, and sort of stick them to each other in a very visible way. The object that you get isn't always uh, immediately a perfect torus because what mainly happens is that you pick up the two ends and the middle of the slinky just drops straight down to the floor but yeah. you can then sort of grab it and wrestle it and hug it into a, a sort of torus <laughs> shape and everyone's like yeah I see what you're doing there um, um, but the other really nice thing about it is of course because um, I'm doing workshops about this and I'm sort of talking about the different steps that you go through and like you start with a square and you make it into a cylinder and you make it into a torus. Um, and uh, at that point, we usually dive off and talk about Mobius bands for a while, because that's another thing you can do by gluing the edges of a square, but you put a twist in. And uh, we've got an episode about Mobius bands, so people already know yeah. what that is. Um, but in fact, if you tell people this, if you tell people, oh, you can join up a pair of edges, you can join up two pairs of edges, and you can join up a pair of edges with a twist. If you just stop there, they're like sorry, what happens <laughs> if you join up with a twist and join up both pairs of edges? Because it's a really obvious, natural question to yeah. ask next. Um, and this is how you get a climb bottle, which we've also done an episode about. But with the slinky, you can physically do this, right? So you can take the two ends of the slinky and in order to make it into a climb bottle, you have to join those two ends. So if you imagine marrying up the ends of a slinky kind of end to end, but you need to do that with a twist. So in the same way that when you make a Mobius band, you get the two ends of a strip of paper and just turn one of them over. You get your two ends of your cylinder and turn one of them the other way around. And then you can't kind of put them onto each other in the same way that you can when they're facing the right way. But you can slide the slinky through itself because it's just made out of rings. So you can slot the two ends of the slinky together. So the two open ends are actually then in the same place but they're pointing the same way. Um, and you yeah. get a, an object that is topologically equivalent to a climb bottle. And it doesn't look like the sort of, um, if you imagine a glass climb bottle, uh, like the one that we talked about in the previous episode, where you've got like a tube that punches a hole through the side and then expands to join onto the outside. But you have got a self-intersection um, and you've got the same kind of structure going on. And it's just... it. Like there's an animation on Wikipedia of a t of a tube joining onto the back of itself to make a climb bottle, and it's like a physical version of that. And I just find it really exciting that you can physically <laughs> hold it in your hands and do that in front of everyone. Um, and they go, "What?" Because it's a four dimensional object and it's very confusing. But it's yeah. it's nice. It's sort of a hmm. a bit more of a thing that they can hold onto in their minds. So um, yeah. that is one of my favourite things uh, to do with a slinky. Hmm. Um, and I guess if anyone would like a further fun thing to do with the slinky that isn't dropping you down the stairs, obviously do that first. Um, uh, my slinky related puzzle, which is not a massively complicated puzzle, but it's the kind of thing you can have a bit of fun with. Uh, how long is a slinky? So if I wanted to make a slinky uh, of a given diameter and, and length uh, and I have a bit of wire, how long does that bit of wire need to be to coil it into that slinky um and it turns out you can model it quite nicely with something that is a lot simpler than trying to work out how a helix uh is, is measured yeah. <laughs> uh you can sort of do a little bit of mental gymnastics and, and model it more simply than that but uh it's quite a nice fun little activity especially if you've got actual slinkies to get a ruler and measure these things and, and do these calculations but it's uh that's that's a little kind of bonus thing about slinkies and maths uh but I'm, I'm sure there are more interesting facts about slinkies and maths that i have entirely failed to include here but this is this is what i've got no that was a good good roundup i think yeah that's cool okay so we're both on twitter i'm at peter Ollett. and i am at stex and the podcast itself is at maths objects we both blog at a website called aperiodical.com where you can find more episodes of this podcast and if you know any better maths and slinky facts uh, or if you've got any other objects in your cupboard or otherwise that you think we should do an episode about then please drop us an email objects at aperiodical.com the music is funk game loop by kevin mcleod license under creative Commons. Thank you.